Volatile acidity, or VA, primarily refers to the acetic acid content of a wine sample. Often the terms VA and acetic acid are used interchangeably. If the VA level is not detected and managed properly, rising VA levels can quickly turn a wine into vinegar. The cash still method is often used to measure the VA levels of a wine. The cash still consists of a complex apparatus of glassware with a heating element on the bottom and a condenser on the side. Acetic acid and other volatile compounds are distilled out of a degassed wine sample and the distillate is titrated with a 0.02 normalized sodium hydroxide solution. To measure VA, you'll need the following equipment and supplies. Equipment. An RD80 VA cache still. A 110 volt power outlet. A water faucet and sink. Tubing to connect the still to a water source. A 150 ml Erlenmeyer flask. An ice bath for cooling the water lines. A 25 ml burette. A 10 ml volumetric pipette. A dropper and test tubes with caps. Supplies. Antifoam, acetic acid, alcohol, 1% phenolphthalene, 30% hydrogen peroxide, a 0.02 normalized sodium hydroxide solution, a DI water bottle, and ice. First, we'll need to create a 0.06% acetic acid solution to standardize our measurement. Use a 100 ml volumetric flask and add 12 ml of grain alcohol, along with 0.6 ml of 10% acetic acid. Bring the flask to volume with DI water. Place the acetic acid solution into a labeled and dated reagent container. The solution may be stored in the refrigerator for up to one week. There are two stopcocks on the still. One is used to fill the outer and inner sample chamber and is labeled A. The other is used to aspirate the sample chamber and is labeled B. These stopcocks should only be turned clockwise in the direction of the arrow to provide consistency when filling the chambers. Also, if turned counterclockwise, the nut on the back can come unscrewed. Periodically check the inlet and aspiration stopcocks. While making the acetic acid solution, turn on the water to all the tubing to verify that everything is connected securely. Circulate tap water through the condenser. Be careful not to turn the faucet on too hard or the tubing will come undone. The condenser needs to be kept as cool as possible. So in addition to the cold tap water, set up an ice bath in the plastic container behind the still. Set the cooling tubing into the ice bath. Make sure there is a steady stream of water running through the condenser. Begin the process by making sure the stopcock with the black knob is in the up position. Be sure the white drain clamp at the bottom is closed. Add water via the inlet funnel to a level above the heating coil and at least two inches above the bottom of the inner chamber. Using a one liter plastic container works well for this filling procedure. The standard sample. Now run the acetic acid standard. Use a volumetric pipette to measure 10 mL of 0.06 acetic acid into a test tube. Add one drop of antifoam and 30 microliters of 30% hydrogen peroxide and mix gently. Turn stopcock A so that the green knob is up. Add the sample via the funnel and rinse the tube with DI water using as little water as possible but still getting the entire sample. Make sure the condenser has good water flow and is cool and turn on the power. Be sure to have a labeled flask placed under the condenser drain to capture the sample. 
Wait until you see steam come out of the funnel and then turn the knob horizontal. Add DI water to the funnel to ensure that you have a closed system. The sample size collected should be 100 ml. When the flask has this much distillate, turn off the power and remove the flask from under the condenser and replace with a waste container to catch any remaining distillate. Using the hot plate, heat the sample for about two minutes or until it's warm to the touch. While the sample is heating, aspirate the sample chamber. Open the aspirator stopcock B and suck out the sample chamber by turning it horizontal. Return the stopcock to the vertical position. Rinse the sample chamber three times with DI water by turning the stopcock A with the green knob up. Use stopcock B to aspirate the sample chamber. Refill the outer bowl with DI water. Put the knob A with the black up and add the DI water. This will need to be done after each sample is run. Refill the outer chamber with DI water. Titrate the sample or standard using a 0.02 normalized sodium hydroxide solution. Add 3 to 5 drops of phenolphthalein. And the titration endpoint is a very faint pink. A reference check of pH at room temperature should equal approximately 8.2. Be sure to record the starting and end values on the burette, as this gives you the value for the VA calculation. Running a wine sample. Use the same procedure as the acetic acid standard with a 10 ml wine sample in the test tube instead of the acetic acid. Capture the distillate and titrate using the same method shown earlier. If there are multiple samples to run, prepare all of the samples and then run them in succession using both cache stills. Each sample should be run in duplicate to assure accurate results. Be sure and give yourself enough time near the end of the day to clean the stills. Titrate the wine sample using a 0.02 normalized sodium hydroxide solution. Add 3 to 5 drops of phenolphthalein. The titration endpoint is a very faint pink. A reference check of pH at room temperature should equal approximately 8.2. Be sure to record the starting and end values on the burette, as this gives you the value for the VA calculation. To calculate the VA level, use the following formula. The VA in grams per liter equals the milliliters of sodium hydroxide times the normal value times 0 0.60 times 1000 divided by the milliliters of wine in the sample. In this case, 10 milliliters. Record the values. To learn more about the Vineyard and Winery Technology Program offered at Yakima Valley Community College, visit us online at www.yvcc.edu slash wine. This material is based upon work supported by the National Science Foundation under grant number 1003721. Any opinions, findings, and conclusions or recommendations expressed in this material are those of the authors and do not necessarily reflect the views of the National Science Foundation.